Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And today I want to share some January 2022 new releases that I am interested in reading. So I, this is not all the books on my interest list, but these are the ones that either I'm caught up in the series, so if it's a sequel I'm caught up, or it's the first book in a series. So there are more books that I'm interested in. If they are a book that's in a series, I'm just not caught up in that series. I won't be talking about it here. But still, there are 15 books on my list today. A lot of books seem to be coming out in January. So the first on this list coming out on the 4th of January is Tiger Honor by Yoon Han Lee. And this is number two in their middle grade series, The Thousand Worlds. The first one followed Min, who was a fox, who, whose family got notification that her brother had defected from the Space Academy or the Space Force forget exactly the name for it. And Min didn't believe that. That's not her brother's personality, and she went out to prove that that was wrong. So this is number two in that series. It is not going to follow the perspective of Min from the description. It's going to follow the perspective of Sabin, who is a tiger. Reading the description of this book actually spoils a little bit of the first book, so I'm not going to. Also coming out on January 4th is The Starless Crown by James Rollins. This is number one in their Moonfall series. And I'm just gonna go ahead and read the synopsis. A gifted student foretells an apocalypse. Her reward is a sentence of death. Fleeing into the unknown, she is drawn into a team of outcasts. A broken soldier who once again takes up the weapons he's forbidden to wield and carves a trail back home. A drunken prince who steps out from his beloved brother's shadow and claims a purpose of his own. An imprisoned thief who escapes the crushing dark and discovers a gleaming artifact, one that will ignite a power struggle across the globe. On the run, hunted by enemies old and new, they must learn to trust each other in order to survive in a world evolved in strange, beautiful, and deadly ways and uncover ancient secrets that hold the key to their salvation. But with every, but with each passing moment, doom draws closer. Who will claim the starless crown? So it definitely has huge found family vibes. If that's your thing, I think you'll probably like this. Also, it's fantasy. Also coming out January 4th is The Kendra by Alicia Dow. And this seems to be a young adult science fiction. Joya Barra knows her place. A commoner from the lowly planet Halley, she lives a, she lives a simple life, apart from the notoriety that being kindred to the nobility's most infam infamous playboy brings. Duke Felix Hamdi has a plan. He will exasperate his noble family to the point that they agree to let him choose his own future and finally meet his kindred face to face. So I'm not sure what kindred means in this world, but obviously it's something special. Then the royal family is assassinated, putting Felix next in line for the throne and accused of the murders. Someone will stop at nothing until he's dead, which means they'll target Joy too. Meeting in person for the first time as they steal a spacecraft and flee amid chaos might not be ideal, and neither is crash landing on the strange backward planet called Earth, but hiding might just be the perfect way to discover the true strength of the kindred bond and expose a scandal and a love that may decide the future of the galaxy. Coming out on January 4th, we have Olga Dies Dreaming by Zochi Gonzalez. This is actually a contemporary story. I'm normally not big into the contemporary, but this just sounds like it has an interesting premise. It's 2017 and Olga and her brother Pedro Acevedo are bold-faced names in their hometown of New York. Prieto is a popular congressman representing their gentrifying Latinx neighborhood in Brooklyn, while Olga is the Tony wedding planner for Manhattan's power brokers. Despite their alluring public lives, Behind closed doors, things are far less rosy. Sure, Olga can orchestrate the love stories of the 1%, but she can't seem to find her own until she meets Mateo, who forces her to confront the effects of long-held family secrets. 27 years ago, their mother Blanca, a young lord turned radical, abandoned her children to advance a militant political cause, leaving them to be raised by their grandmother. Now with the winds of hurricane season, Blanca has come back 
barreling into their lives. Set against the backdrop of New York City in the months surrounding the most devastating hurricane in Puerto Rico's history, Olga Dies Dreaming is a story that examines political corruption, familial strife, and the very notion of the American dream, all while asking what it really means to weather a storm. So moving on to January the 11th, we have The Amber Crown by J.C. Bedford, which is first in a new epic fantasy series. The king is dead, his queen is missing. On the Amber Coast, the usurper king is driving Zavonia to the brink of war. A dangerous magical power is rising up in Biela Miasto, and the only people who can set things right are a failed bodyguard, a landstrider witch, and the assassin who set off the whole sorry chain of events. And I'm going to just end it there. It goes more. So it seems like it also has a found family vibe. And I like my found families. Also coming out on January 11th, we have Battle of the Linguist Mages. And this seems to be a science fiction fantasy. Isabel is the queen of the medieval rave-themed VR game, Sparkle Dungeon. Her prowess in the game makes her an ideal candidate to learn the secrets of power morphemes, a naturally dense units of meaning that warp perception when skillfully pronounced. But Isabel's reputation makes her the target of a strange resistance movement led by spellcasting anarchists who may be the only thing stopping the cabal from toppling California over the edge of a terrible transformation with 40 million lives at stake. Time is short for Isabel to level up and choose a side because the cabal has attracted much bigger and weirder enemies than the anarchist resistance, emerging from dark and vicious dimensions of reality and heading straight for planet Earth. And... Just the idea of using words and linguistics as battles and spells. This sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. Also coming out on the 11th of January is The Bone Spindle by Leslie Vetter. And this seems to be a type of Sleeping Beauty retelling, but not just focused on the Sleeping Beauty character. It says, Fi is a bookish treasure hunter with the knack for ruins and riddles who definitely doesn't believe in true love. Shane is a tough-as-dirt girl warrior from the North who likes cracking skulls, pretty girls, and doing things her own way. Briar Rose is a prince under a sleeping curse who's been waiting a hundred years for the kiss that will wake him up. So already we have some switching where Briar Rose is the prince, not the princess, who's under a sleeping curse. So this sounds like it is going to be a lot of fun. I, Sleeping Beauty is one of my favorite fairy tales, and I realize I'm, as I'm saying this, it is a dark fairy tale in reality, but I do enjoy all the different iterations and plays on it, so I'm excited to read this. Coming out on January 11th, we have Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Su Lin Tan, and this is a young adult fantasy novel based off of Chinese mythology. And yes, I am going to butcher names, and I apologize. Growing up on the moon, Jing Yin is accustomed to solitude, unaware that she's being hidden from the feared celestial empire, who exiled her mother for stealing his elixir of immortality. But when her magic flares and her existence is discovered, she's forced to flee her home, leaving her mother behind. Alone, powerless, and afraid, she makes her way to the Celestial Kingdom, a land of wonder and secrets. Disguising her identity, she seizes an opportunity to learn alongside the Emperor's son, mastering archery and magic, even as passion flames between her and the prince. To save her mother, she embarks on a perilous quest, confronting legendary creatures and vicious enemies across the earth and skies. But when treachery looms and forbidden magic threatens the kingdom, she must challenge the ruthless celestial emperor for her dream, striking a dangerous bargain in which she is torn between losing all she loves or plunging the realm into chaos. Then moving on to January the 18th, we have Engines of Empire by Richard S. Ford. And this is another epic fantasy. The nation of Torwin is run on the power of industry, and industry is run by the guilds. Chief among them are the Hawkspurs, and their responsibility is to keep the gears of the empire turning. It's exactly why the matriarch, Rosamond Harkspur, sends each of her heirs to the far reaches of the nation. Connell, the eldest son, is sent to the distant frontier to earn his stripes in the military. It is here that he faces a threat he could never have seen coming, the first rumblings of revolution. Tyretta's sorceress connection to the magical resource of pure stone that fuels the Empire's machines makes her a perfect heir, in theory. While Tyretta hopes that she might shirk her responsibilities during her journey, one of Torwin's most important pure stone minds, she instead finds the dark horrors of industry 
that the Empire would prefer to keep hidden. The youngest, Fulren, is a talented artificer and finds himself acting as a consort to a foreign emissary. Soon after, he is framed for a crime he never committed, a crime that could start a war. So this seems to be a nice family political drama, and I'm curious, are the siblings going to contact one another and rely on one another, or are they more separated in how they operate? It will be interesting to see. Also coming out on the 18th of January, we have The Beholden by, Ro by Cassandra Rose Clark, and this is listed as a fantasy. Orphaned as young women, Celestia and Isara de Molina find themselves land-rich but destitute, with only a failing rainforest acreage. Celestia's perfect manners and Isara's nascent magic to their aristocratic names. With the last of their money running out, they enact a dangerous plan. Using a spell she doesn't fully understand, Isara summons the Lady of the Seraphine and demands a favor. A husband for Celestia, one rich enough to enable the De Molina sisters to keep their land. But a favor from the river goddess always comes at a cost. Now, five years later, rumors of war and disease are spreading. Celestia's husband has been called away on a secret mission for the Emperor, and the Lady of the Seraphine is back to collect her due. Isara will be forced to leave the academy where she has been studying to become a mage. Celestia will be pulled away from her now flourishing farm while newly pregnant with her first child. Together, they must repay their debt to the Lady, embarking on a mission that will put them on a collision course with Celestia's husband, the Emperor, and a god even more powerful than the Lady of Seraphine. And this just sounds like a lot of fun. I especially like that we get to see the consequences and ramifications of something that was done earlier, and both women are having to work together to pay this price. Also coming out on the 18th of January, we have Servant Mage by Kate Elliott. Felion is a lamplighter able to provide illumination through magic. A group of rebel monarchists free her from indentured servitude and take her on a journey to rescue trapped compatriots from an underground complex of mines. Along the way, they get caught up in a conspiracy to kill the latest royal child and wipe out the monarchist movement for good. But Felion has more than just her lamplighting skills up her sleeve. Also coming out on January 18th is Anatomy, a love story by Dana Schwartz. And this is a historical fiction romance. And it gives me, I guess, kind of like Frankenstein vibes. I haven't actually read that book yet, but just from the media culture surrounding it, that's kind of what I'm getting. Um, Edinburgh, 1817, Hazel Sinnott is a lady who wants to be a surgeon more than she wants to be married. More than she wants to marry. Jake Kerr is a resurrection man who's just trying to survive in a city where it's too easy to die. When the two of them have a chance encounter outside the Edinburgh Anatomist Society, Hazel thinks nothing of it at first, but after she gets kicked out of the renowned surgeon Dr. Beecham's lectures for being the wrong gender, she realizes that her new acquaintance might be more helpful than she first thought, because Hazel has made a deal with Dr. Beecham. If she can pass the medical examination on her own, the university will allow her to enroll. Without official lessons, though, Hazel will need more than just her books. She'll need bodies to study, corpses to dissect. Lucky that she's made the acquaintance of someone who digs them up for a living, then. But Jack has his own problems. Strange men have been seen skulking around cemeteries. His friends are disappearing up the streets. Hazel and Jack work together to uncover the secrets buried not just in unmarked graves, but in the very heart of Edinburgh society. So moving on to January 25th is Rise of the Mages by Scott Drakeford. Imriel Irie wants nothing more than to test to be a weapons master. His final exam will be a bloody insurrection, staged by corrupt nobles and priests that enslaves his brother. With the aid of his war master tutor, herself an undercover mage, Imriel discovers his own latent and powerful talents. To rescue his brother, Imriel must embrace not only his abilities as a warrior, but also his place as the last of the ancient mage kings, for the fallen god has returned, and he is hungry. So again, sounds like another epic fantasy. And then coming out on January the 25th, I have Obsidian by Sarah J. Daly, and this is another fantasy. Shay Knox is a fiend, a rogue, and a wanted murderer, though her only true crime is that she chooses to dress like a man. Proud and defiant, she wears her tattoos openly as any blood wizard would and carries obsidian blades at her hips. Those who laughingly call her a witch to her face soon learn an unfortunate lesson. 
Shade Knox might be an abomination, but she wields her blades with devastating precision, gleefully shedding blood for elemental magic that matches any man's. And I'm going to stop there on the synopsis, because I think it kind of starts to get into more of the plot. And this is just more to tantalize. Do you want to know more? Also coming out on the 25th of January is Dead Silence by S.A. Barnes, or also known as Stacy Kate, I believe. And this, from what I understand, I've heard a, a review of it already, is uh, more like a horror science fiction in the style of aliens. And from what I understand, it starts off where a group of salvagers finds a ship where it shouldn't be, they go to investigate, and then it time jumps where one of those people who survived the first encounter is going back with another group to investigate, which is what, why it kind of gives me Aliens vibes, just listening to it. Claire Kovalik is days away from being unemployed, made obsolete when her beacon repair crew picks up a strange distress sentinel. With nothing to lose and no desire to return to Earth, Claire and her team decide to investigate. What they find at the other end of the signal is a shock. The Aurora, a famous luxury space liner that vanished on its maiden tour of the solar system more than 20 years ago. A salvage claim like this could set Claire and her crew up for life, but a quick trip through the Aurora reveals that something isn't right. And last for this month, coming out also on the 25th of January, is Goliath by Tochi Anyabuchi. In the 2050s, Earth has begun to empty. Those with the means and the privilege have departed the great cities of the United States for the more comfortable confines of space colonies. Those left behind salvage what they can from the collapsing infrastructure. As they eke out an existence, their neighborhoods are being cannibalized, brick by brick. Their houses are sent to the colonies, which was once a home, now a quaint reminder for the colonists of the world that they wrecked. A primal biblical epic flung into the future, Goliath weaves together disparate narratives, a space dweller looking at New Haven, Connecticut as a chance to reconnect with a spiraling lover, a group of laborers attempting to renew the promises of Earth's crumbling cities, a journalist attempting to capture the violence of the streets, a marshal trying to solve a kidnapping into an urgently into a richly urgent mosaic about race, class, gentrification, and who is allowed to be the hero of any history. So this is doing a lot. It's a dystopia, which is not normally my favorite, but in a science fiction way that also is addressing problems that are happening now. So these are just a few of the 2022 January new releases that I am excited about. Are any of these books that you're excited about? If so, which one are you most excited about? If not, what is a January 2022? 22 release that you are excited about. If you like this video, please mark the like button and subscribe. Thank you and have a great day.